So it is the content of today's course, which is the last lecture. We will continue with this from Jeter, in fact, effect of Jeter at different locations from last lecture. It's a very interesting, uh, uh, again, another trade off in PLL. As you can see, uh, with respect to input jitter, of course, it's same as input frequency. Therefore, when you want to design, you will consider crossover frequency to be enough below uh, input frequency. So, therefore, you don't have, you can control it. But interestingly, for the jitter, which is coming from VCO side, actually, it's a high pass filter. And that is now gives another trade off. Means that because it's a high pass filter, therefore, if you plot it, so this, this was last slide of previous lecture. Therefore, you will get, according to this high pass transfer function, For high pass transfer function, the body plot will be something like this, right? And if you have some picking, therefore it may look like this. So this is log omega and this is magnitude. n y n v c o s which was exactly having uh, which was exactly of the same denominator of the loop transfer function therefore here the, in fact only it is high pass and because it is high pass it means that it's minimum frequency or in fact lower cutoff frequency because it's a high pass so this cutoff frequency is same as that low pass filter so Low pass filter will be something like this, and this will be something like this. So eventually, these two will be of the order of each other. So then, what does it mean? Exact, very interesting uh, trade-off. You need to design the bandwidth of the loop filter to be enough low, right? The entire, in fact, loop bandwidth to be low, because you don't want to pass the input frequency, reference frequency. You don't want to only, you want only to pass low frequency, which will give you an idea of the change in the phase. But now, if you make that bandwidth very low, this means that you are actually pushing the cutoff frequency of high pass filter to lower frequencies. And then this means that now you have more jitter, which is coming from VC. So it's a perfect trade off. Therefore, that is the reason there are upper limits and lower limits on the bandwidth of loop filter. In fact, bandwidth of the loop, this is in fact the loop bandwidth. So, this was the last uh, item of uh, uh, non-ideal non uh, effects in PLA, project form based PLA. So one more thing, okay, so this is over, therefore accordingly now because you know this, therefore I will give you just the now the overall flow when you want to design a PLA. Therefore, loop bandwidth should be less than some value bandwidth max. And value of bandwidth max is determined by <clears throat> because we don't want to have a very high bandwidth, right? So this is this depends on the input frequency. Suppose if you have, for example, you want to have a PLL. Uh, which gives you, for example, like, which behaves like a synthesizer for you, and then you have different, uh, uh, in fact, stations, and then a spacing between the stations are known. Now, when you switch from one station to another station, 
So finally, you have say several station in between. So your input frequency has a minimum value, has a maximum value. So according to the minimum value of that frequency, you want to determine the bandwidth of the loop filter because what you want is that the input frequency, which is as your reference frequency, incoming frequency, it should not enter into the it should not pass through the filter. Otherwise, the entire information you get is based on reference frequency, not based on phase difference. Therefore, minimum frequency, input frequency will determine one of the, if in fact, is one of the factors which will determine the upper limit or maximum bandwidth of the loop, width, loop bandwidth. And what we do is that usually we choose this loop bandwidth to be much below that. I told you one upon ten. But even in some designs, according, you know, it depends on the, uh, uh, that kind of PLL you are designing. If you have a very stringent condition to avoid reference frequency to come inside the loop, sometimes this ratio goes to a 1 upon 100. So this means that what you want to do is that you want to choose the bandwidth max to be less than 1 upon 10 F min F sorry F in me. So this number can reach up to 100. Okay, so this is one of the upper limits. Factors which determines the maximum bandwidth. And of course, whatever noise, in fact, you can uh, from uh, Filter and charge pump also you will get some noises, phase noises. Therefore, you want to limit them also. This will determine that bandwidth. But this is a very important factor. So now loop bandwidth. Now knowing that jitter will determine jitter of VCO, will determine the cutoff, will determine how much noise will come to the loop with a high pass, old, uh, high pass filter uh, kind of characteristics, therefore loop, band loop bandwidth should be greater than some bandwidth mean. So this is determined according to phase noise or jitter from VCO. And another point is we had, right? It was settling time of the loop. Okay, so therefore, this now we have phase noise effect also. So eventually we have three factors which we need to consider when we want to choose bandwidth of the loop and zeta factor. And then now because we have an additional capacitor, so now the loop gain, magnitude of loop gain versus frequency will look like this. You have a zero, last time we saw it happens before crossover frequency, then we ha you have a capacitor and because of capacitor then you will get a second ball. So this is F crossover frequency, Y, or you may see it as F unity gain, any one of these symbols, and this was zero omega z which was 1 upon rc and then this is second pole which is due to additional capacitor at the output of charge pump omega r c2 so this is loop gain so 
So now, if you want to design, in fact, this bandwidth <coughs> max is actually determined according to the input frequency, and this bandwidth max has direct relation to this crossover frequency. Therefore, when you want to design, according to this characteristic of second order charge pump based PLA, right? So for design, you So according to minimum frequency of input, so this F in is same as uh, reference frequency. Okay, so if you have different range, suppose if you have a range of input frequencies, after all, you need to look at the minimum frequency at the input. So this F in, minimum frequency that you have, and then of course with respect to your loop bandwidth. Say for example, this can be at least around 10. I will make it. Less than 10 times of loop bandwidth. And this loop bandwidth eventually is a function of with crossover frequency. F means if it's a function. And because why I'm saying it's a function? Because you have uh, zeta factor. According to zeta, this relation as you, we saw last time. It might be a little less than uh, crossover frequency. It may be a little more than crossover frequency. So it is around crossover frequency. I guess. So that's why this loop bandwidth is is within a range of crossover frequency. Therefore, when you design, even you can choose your crossover frequency. And this number can go up to say hundred sometimes, depending on this. So for design, you consider this, and this is direct relation to. Maybe it's better I put it in this way. It has direct relation to F crossover frequency. Yeah, that is better. It has direct relation to F crossover frequency. Therefore, this is your choice. And then settling time. Will give you an idea of zeta omega n. And having these two, then you have almost, you know, because you have main, mainly two parameters to play with. I is the, I depends on the power. Therefore, these two, in fact, you just these two equations will give you the preliminary design. Okay, so for uh, VCO part, it's very straightforward in digital domain, and all of you are familiar, therefore I don't cons uh, consider any kind of VCO here. Uh, see, for digital VCO, you may be familiar. Any idea what is a digital VCO? Which kind of module we can use as digital VCO? See, its frequency should change. How do you get a oscillator in frequency domain? Sorry, in digital domain. Okay, let's start. How do you get oscillator in digital domain? How do you make an oscillator? Digital oscillator? Yeah? No. Inverter chain? Input. How do you convert an inverter chain to oscillator? You are closed. Odd numbers of inverter in in a, a loop. So you have a closed loop of odd number of inverters. So this is a simple oscillator, right? Now what you want to do? He says that okay, we will change the capacitive loading or each one of these capacitors. Therefore, we have a VCO. 
That is correct, but then you, your entire control is digital. It's completely digital because when you want to change the frequency, you need to change the frequency in digital. Program it and put an array of capacitors. Another way would be to change the delay of inverter itself as a function of input voltage. So when you change the delay of inverter as a function of input voltage, you will get a digital VCO. Now how you can change the delay of inverter? Do you know any inverter of which you can change the delay? Changing current, yeah. So therefore you can have, exactly, you can have an inverter of which the charge and discharge current is controlled by a voltage. Therefore it's not simply a pull up and pull down uh, combination, it has two more components. So you make PMOS series with another PMOS, you make NMOS series with another NMOS, right? So therefore now this series and MOS and PMOS are actually two current sources. Interestingly, it's very similar to charge pump that we discussed last time. This architecture. So do you remember this was a switch and this was a current source for pull up. Same thing for pull down, right? So this switch is actually PMOS switch in inverter. And here is the transistor which is used as a current source. Therefore, you can have a current source in this way. So, it means that now your inverter has, instead of a simple PMOS as a switch, it has a switch series or uh, with a current source. Therefore, charge and discharge of load capacitor in the inverter is controlled by this V-bias. So, you have this V-bias to be an analog voltage. Therefore, you will have a digital VC. And it is fairly linear because it's a current source. So the entire charge and discharge current is controlled. It's exactly like a charge pump. So charge pump is quite linear. Therefore, you can have to put this charge pump eventually in the loop. So you will make inverter. So charge pump is actually an inverter. Only we have separated inputs of NMOS and PMOS. One is controlled by up, one is controlled by down. If you connect them, then you will have an inverter with controlling current. And this kind of inverter, you may know, is called current to start inverter. So that's why this, this file almost is closed. So I switch to analog uh, PLL and there according to that I will explain the um, block range and Capture range. So, any question is left from charge pump phase PLA? Okay. So, you may guess now what will be done analog PLA. Actually, I should not say analog digital, analog signals and digital signals. Okay. This is the meaning of analog. So, in in, in a PLL, where input signal and VCO are generating analog signals, then we call it analog PLL. So, in, therefore, instead of having, for example, an, a square wave, which is going from 0 to 1, so it is a sine wave. And instead of a VCO, which is generating a pulse going from low to high, in fact, a square wave generator, so we will have a sine wave generator. So therefore, instead of a, so therefore, therefore you need only to change your, see loop filter is same as before, but only now it's a analog filter, you don't have concept of charge pump, that is not, that is already known. For VCO, you can use a tank LC VCO, that is also well known. And then what remains is a phase comparator. And then for phase comparator also, you know what is the best kind of analog phase comparator. Because now you, for analog phase comparator, you have two sine waves. So they are given to a module which is eventually analog. Phase detector, I should not call it comparator, it's just phase detector. So 
so what could be the best module so because what we want is to get phi 1 minus phi 2 or eventually actually what we want to get is omega 1 t plus phi 1 minus omega 2 t plus phi 2 this is an example eventually this is a variable in general so one of the best kind of phase detectors in analog domain is an analog multiplier Because when you multiply two sine wave, so suppose if I multiply these two, sorry, now this will be cosine, right? So now if you pass it from a low pass filter so that this first term will get omitted so the second term will remain and the second term is given you information about difference between frequencies and difference between phases. So it's a phase frequency detector in the analog domain and if the loop is locked so that you will have omega 1 equal to omega 2 then you will get exactly a <coughs> perfect phase detector. The only problem is here it is a cosine, it's not a linear function of the phase difference. So therefore, to be able to make a linear phase detector, we need to put some approximation on the difference between phases in a steady state, so that there, we are sure that it will have almost a linear performance. And also, even when loop is deviated from <coughs> steady state, the amount of change in the phase should not be too much. Otherwise, this won't be a linear phase detector. This is one of the things that we didn't have in digital domain, but here we have this constant in analog domain. So therefore, here linearity needs to be considered for phase detector. Usually what they do is that they <coughs> add 50 degree, uh, 90 degree phase shift to the oscillator so that instead of cosine they will get a sign and then when difference between phases is a small they can comp uh, uh, approximate sine phi 1 minus phi 2 by phi 1 minus phi 2. This is exactly like that when you have cosine phi 1 minus phi 2 you consider phi 1 minus phi 2 is close to 90 and then it has a little variation around 90. Then you can consider it as a linear phase change. So these are the only differences, there is no other difference. From design point of view, everything is same as before. You will get again a second order transfer function, again you will get zeta omega n. So everything is same, even design considerations are same. But now because it is a multiplier, it gives a better idea to explain how we can define lock range and capture range. So suppose we have a loop which is already locked. Lock range is the range of frequencies that if we apply a frequency in that range to, BC, to PLL and it is already locked, still it will remain in lock condition. Means that is range of frequencies which keep uh, PLL in the lock mode if it is already in the lock mode. So now how this range is defined? 
the, obviously this should depend on VCO and phase detector gain. See, because VCO has a limited range, you cannot extra, uh, generate all frequencies at the output of VCO because VCO has a limited range of frequencies at the output. That is the reason lock range is limited. So VCO is the cause of, so what is the output of low pass filter? Eventually output of low pass filter, if you consider it is passive in general. So you have a K, which is coming from the phase detector multiplied by delta phi, right? In general, now we are not talking about digital or analog in general, okay? But in analog, it's much easier to derive the analytical, at least approximate analytical expression for this. But we want anyway to have a linear phase detector and then low pass filter if it is passive. So if it is even active, that's okay. You combine the gain of low pass filter with phase detector. Finally, you will get some output like this at the output of low pass filter. So now this is given to VCO. So what is the maximum range this can have? So eventually the maximum range this voltage can have according to differences between phases. I call it delta. So I write it here. So eventually because delta phi is a phase difference. So phase difference also has a, I mean, number, right? So for example, if I consider delta phi between two inputs is minus pi and plus pi. So therefore, Okay, these are all small signal. If I make it small signal, then I don't need to use delta. So V out, low pass filter will be between pi kb and minus pi k. And this is given to VCO. So now, Therefore, omega oscillator is eventually VCO. Also, will because this is the DC value voltage which is applied to the VCO. VCO has a gain of KVCO. So, it will get multiplied by pi AP. And here also will be minus K. CO pi into pi, Kp into pi. So therefore, what does it mean? It means that <coughs> the range of frequencies which <coughs> that VCO can generate only lies between these two limits. Therefore, lock range of the VC, VLL loop cannot go beyond this value. This gives you the maximum value. Therefore, maximum lock range is this. If VCO is perfectly symmetric, and this is what we want for the best uh, performance in the sense that best range, so it is better to be symmetric. Therefore, output of VCO will be some center frequency plus minus KP KVCO pi. So, minus will give you mean. So, this is range. And plus will give you max. So, lock range is 2 pi KP, KVC.
it's a very gives a very simple approximate relation that by which you can easily decide about the doctrine. So now what is capture range? Capture range is range of frequency that if we apply a frequency in that range to PLL and PLL is not locked so therefore loop is not locked therefore input frequency output and VCO frequencies are not same and this usually uh, leads to free running oscillation of VCO because VCO has omega zero on average VCO will oscillate around omega zero close to omega zero in these conditions because on average it will try always to follow the input but it cannot so it goes up and down so on average it will be around this omega zero <laughs> so if you apply a signal and this frequency range if VCO is not locked it will lock something after something Therefore, if it is not still locked, but it is able to lock. So, capture range means that it is not locked, but if we, so there is no locking condition, even input of VCO, input of PLL is zero, connected to ground. Now, you remove connection to ground, connect it to some frequency. So, it will take some time for loop to reach to lock condition. This will happen only if that input frequency is in the capture range. So that is the definition of capture range. Therefore, for capture range, we assume that loop <coughs> is not perfectly locked. So therefore, now considering a multiplier uh, makes the calculation easy. So output voltage of AC detector. For example, is K by now we have two frequencies, right? One is input, omega in minus omega zero into T. Okay, and omega zero is the free running oscillator because the still loop is not locked. We assume it has been in the omega zero. So now, therefore, this is output of analog phase detector or multiplier. So now if you apply this to the filter because see this is a frequency omega in minus omega zero and we have a low pass filter therefore it will show some value if its value for this particular uh, time varying output is not one transfer function is not one that's why I will write the entire transfer function precisely so therefore we out LPF will be k pi input frequency sorry is omega in minus omega zeros and we have a transfer function so transfer function at that particular value right and then it will add some phase and phi is In fact, phase of HLPF at omega in minus omega zero. By the way, this is quite approximation, right? This is really an approximate because all the time I assume that VCO is at a free running frequency, approximate derivation. But it is good to at least gives an idea of roughly order of the capture range. So because now this frequency is not DC, therefore according to the transfer function of low pass filter, we will get this. Okay. And then now this is applied to VCO. So now output frequency of VCO, therefore omega. output of low pass filter 
انجام گازی رو اسپری رنینگ فرکانسی تو ایونچوالی اومگا زیرو بیکاز ایس لایک ان اپریتینگ پوینت وی دونت کیر اباوت ایت بات هیر بیکاز ایت ایز نات لاک درفور وی ار کنسیدرینگ لارج سیگنال انالیسیس تو درفور آوتپوت فرکانسی اف وی سی او ویل بی اومگا زیرو پلاس کی وی سی او ملٹیپلای بای دس So omega zero is free running frequency and therefore the amount of So now uh -huh. suppose if we want this to lock if loop locks What will be the condition? So you will have omega in minus omega zero upon K V C O is equal to v out local filter right i put this as a star okay if this loop wants to lock it needs some particular if it wants to lock at omega in It needs a particular value, which is the out star LPF. And then output of this low pass filter should be enough larger than this, so that it will allow to the slope to lock at this value. Therefore, now what is applied is this. This is getting multiplied by K V C O. So this plus omega zero. Eventually, what we want to be omega in, right? I mean, we want this to finally reach at some particular phi to this omega in. So, because this cosine is less than or equal to zero absolute value, therefore, means that this Kp absolute value of HLP. Omega in minus omega zero. This value into K V C O, where this is equal to omega in minus omega zero. So therefore, this term should be greater than omega in minus omega on average. Assuming, for example, omega in is greater than omega zero. If it is less, then it will be reversed as well because there will be only a sign. So this will give an idea of what is the rough. This is just a rough, not exact value, because eventually it's a non-linear mode. Therefore, it's very difficult to get exact value. This gives only an idea. So omega in less than omega zero plus AP.
So for lock range, what was for lock range? So this will be eventually omega in less than this or omega in greater than this. Again, same thing. This is for capture. So by the way, this is approximation. This is very approximate. For lock range was omega in omega zero plus minus we derive the value two pi kp. Okay, I mean yeah here it just there is a two pi. Okay, so I need to consider a 2 pi here if I want to make it exactly same as that. Pi. So it was 2 pi kp kvc. So now interestingly you see lock range is more than capture range. We expect reverse. We usually expect a reversing means that if it is locked we expect to be locked for a longer range. Uh, for a lower range and then if it is going to be to capture the frequency it will do it at a lower range here it is uh, at a longer range so it is reverse what does it mean suppose if you look at the characteristics of the vco uh, pll suppose this is f in and for example this is f vco So first of all, when it is locked, there will be almost a linear relation. Suppose at F0, we have F0, free running frequency. Okay, so it is locked, for example. And then if increase frequency, output frequency also increases. But after some time, when we reach to the maximum for lock, so usually it will come back almost to free running frequency. So it will go away from lock condition. Same thing will happen if you go move in the opposite direction. So here also there is an F mean. Actually, I should make arrow reverse. That's okay. I will correct it. Lock. From here onwards, it will come back to by moving this direction. Now, what is capture range? Capture range. So this is this was in lock. So from here. And here from F0, it's a linear relation and then it will come back. Now for capture, now if we start from lower frequency, so now what we will do, okay, I will do one thing. It's like looking at how VCO performs. If you start giving zero frequency at the input and just increase it, how PLL starts. So until when you start giving frequency of zero so it is not in locked mode therefore it will show free running frequency at some particular value of input frequency it will start locking that particular value is determined by the capture range and that is smaller than the f min lock therefore you will reach 
so that's why I have to correct this plot it will reach let me draw it again F in F V C O and then frequency 0 ok so we and this is F0 free running frequency so as you increase input frequency frequency remains at F0 till you reach to <coughs> F mean capture so it will start locking so it will jump to that particular frequency and then from here it will operate linearly and this is exactly F0 now this is locked now as you increase frequency at some particular frequency it will go away from lock condition that is F max lock right and then it will remain at this pre-running frequency for all other inputs now if you reduce frequency to lock again it needs to lock at F max capture so therefore it will lock at this particular frequency and therefore it will go to locking condition now it will come back and at some value it will go away from locking condition and that is f min Block. So it behaves like this. Capture ring exactly opposite to what we expect in contrast with why what we expect is inside in fact block range. So if you simulate a VCO, you should get such kind of plot. And of course, this amount of hysteresis may or may not be very large. After all, it depends on the transition band of low pass filter, right? I mean, it depends on the transition band of low pass filter. In fact, this difference only is because of the transition band of low pass filter. So we can have a little also about DLL at least because if, when you know the concept then it is enough then we have covered the entire portion and according of course according to your projects then you will go into the details but as far as course is concerned that is enough so any question here? Okay, so last half an hour or so we stand on this and then we will finish. So 
the DLL as its name shows, it's a delay lock loop. Actually, there is no as such difference. See, after all, phase and delay are same. Phase difference and delay is same. Means that if you have a module, which is a delay component, okay? So you have a delay element. So now we are talking about digital domain. It can be analog domain also. So you have a phi in, you have a phi out. If input frequency is omega in, delay element doesn't change the frequency if it is a linear delay element. So linear here has two meanings, then we will see. At least here I mean with respect to input frequency, input signal. So Therefore, if frequency, input frequency is omega in, output frequency also is omega in, only phase will change. And then the entire change is here only because of the delay. Therefore, for example, if you have sine wave at the output, you will have Delay Play with the value of TD. Therefore, it will be sine omega in T plus phi in minus omega in TD. Therefore, difference between input and output phase which is a constant value, if frequency is constant. So according to input frequency, you will get a particular phase difference. Therefore, this delay element doesn't do anything special. It eventually, it's like a phase shifter. So now, if you don't want to generate any particular frequency, we, we kept with you in the loop, the reason was we wanted to have a frequency generator and then we wanted to have a frequency synthesizer and also a demodulator application. Therefore, we needed VCO. Now, suppose in some other application like synchronization or for example, if you want to only generate different phases of a clock. So, in this particular applications, you don't need to generate any frequency. Frequency already is given at the input signal. You want only synchronize. For example, you want to synchronize data and clock. Or, for example, you want to generate different phases of a clock. Therefore, you don't need any VCO. What you need only to put a delay component or delay element instead of VCO. So, therefore, you just replace VCO with delay component, you will get a DL. So therefore, if you look at the DLL loop, so you have phase frequency detector and low pass filter as before. This is not changing. Only what you will have, you will have a component which is, so a voltage control delay element. And actually, it is linear. So, VCDE means voltage control delay element. Voltage controlled delay element. So, therefore, this is good voltage. But if you give an input voltage, it's not enough. Input voltage determines how much delay. The example here, I if TD was constant, now if you make TD as a function of input voltage, counterpart of VCO will be a variable linearly delay element. So now here, what is the concept of linearity? There is a little bit difference. It's not enough only to be linear, but also it should be linear with respect to input voltage. So that I explain now. But what is the signal? You can, for example, according to application, of course. For example, you have 
a signal here so input frequency and input phase you can use same signal I mean it depends on the application and give it here so this is your reference signal and this input voltage will determine the amount of delay that this delay element should generate and then you for example can have again another delay element it depends how many phases for example you want to generate and suppose I put one more component so now you can generate two phases and then give it back actually this can be any number therefore here I put dot dots means that it can be even more than one more than two so like this. so this is again same component this is one and this is n same component is repeated and this input voltage even here so all of them receive same input voltage all of them now because all of them are same in fact when you want to generate for example different phases usually it is like that we want all these phases to have same width so that's why we use same value of delay let's say all of them are similar and you get same voltage control to all of them therefore they will generate same delay and this signal which is going from first VCDE to the next is actually this signal this signal is coming here and then transfers everywhere which is the input just as a reference signal okay and then this is and here you will get again same as before here you will have phase error So therefore now if we look at the equivalent circuit so this will be pulse frequency detector and LPL to draw it properly because it goes to all of them it's better it's better to draw it like this And then the input signal come over here. And then goes to the next stage and so on. And the final output will come back to the input of phase frequency detail. So each one of them, for example, generates a time delay of T. And this is control voltage. So when we say linear, delay element, so this means that if you give F in, you will get F in and it has a constant delay of TD. Now if you have linear voltage controlled delay element it has another linearity inside it which means that not only if you give a frequency it doesn't change the frequency but now td is a function of f b and this and this td is a linear function of so therefore it's a into 
So it has two linearity inherently. If it is linear voltage control delay element. So linear with respect to input signal, linear with respect to the control voltage. So here we are using linear voltage control delay element. Linear VCD. And this number, for example, one, this is two, and this is n. Okay, so again in a steady state, phase error will be zero, same as PLA, therefore phase error is zero. So if we call this V out, V out is equal to phi in. But here, because it's digital, and then zero doesn't give you any information about this. Instead of equal, I will use two pi, four pi, six pi, same thing. Because then we can get. Suppose, for example, you have n equal to two. Okay, so therefore V out equal to phi in plus 2 pi. I mean it's same. We write it in this way so that we, and then we know that there are equal phase differences everywhere. So means that phase difference between output of the first one, first delay element and its input is delta phi. Second one with its input is delta phi. Therefore if you look every delay element contributes delta phi. Second thing again delta phi and last one also delta phi. So every delay element contributes a shift of delta phi at the input signal. So if you have n equal to 2 then means that total phase shift from input to the output is is If you have 2, it will be 2 delta phi. If you have n, it will be n delta phi, right? So, in general, it's phi out minus phi in is n delta phi. And that is equal to 2 pi, right? So therefore, n delta phi is equal to 2 pi. So you get phases of 2 pi by n everywhere. For example, if n is equal to 2, therefore you will get delta phi equal to pi and Delta phi is equal to two equal to pi, therefore phases will be pi and two pi. If n is equal to three, delta phi will be pi upon three, therefore phases will be pi upon three, two pi upon three and pi. Uh, and two pi. And so on. So eventually it is two pi divided by n. It's very easy. So this is same same circuit only. Now you, and this is actually used when you want to generate different phases in a digital circuit. In fact, multi-phase general, clock phase generation is based on this, simply DLA. Only, the only challenge here is if you want to get exactly same phases, means that same delay, this all delay components should be matched. So this is one of the challenges in design of DLA. So all of them should have calibration and mismatch compensation specifically if number of stages are too much but usually you don't need more than four phases and practically four phases is very common more than four i mean depends on the application but unless your frequency is low otherwise for very high frequencies more than that it's like for example for time interleaving architecture you use a dll you generate this clock phases and then you apply it to time interleaving 
but like even time interleaving, hardly one can go beyond four. It's not very practical. So it's a very interesting and very useful circuit. By the way, here because this delay element is like a constant uh, shift which will give you delta phi as a function of V out. Therefore, you can again model it with a simple linear small signal model. Only for delay element, you will use delta phi is equal to some k multiplied by V and V is input voltage and that k is actually ratio of delta phi by V or V out. I have to specify V out. Call it way out here. So, small signal analysis is same as before. I think Razavi has a small signal analysis is same as PLL, no difference in fact between uh, this and PLL. And uh, again, again, I mean, everything uh, concept is same, only this is in the time domain instead of to be in phase domain. That's it. And you don't need to generate any frequency. For example, Suppose if you want to make your data and clock to be synchronized, so for that, instead of applying input signal to phase detector and delay element, you apply your data to delay elements and then you apply your clock here. Then you will get zero phase shift here and therefore your clock and data will get synchronized. So that is also one of the applications of DLL in synchronizers. So I will stop here.